We are Danny and Rochelle. We've had our share of milestones together. From being high school sweethearts to getting married. As well as all the other adventures that came along the way. But since the pandemic, we've had to put our exploration on hold to start a new adventure. Becoming homeowners. Come along with us as we start a new chapter together. We'll be documenting all of our experiences. Both the highs and the lows. The fun we have along the way. And our journey to a new home. <laughs> oh my god, don't die. We're here at Lilith picking up an order for a water softener. <laughs> I'm just checking our inventory. Okay, let's see. Charlotte pipe 2 inch diameter ABS P trap fitting. P trap, yeah. Shark bike, brass two quarter inch push to connect, two quarter inch push to connect, multi turn stop, and waist belt. Three of them. Oh, yeah. Shark by three quarter inch diameter by ten T. foot hex D pipe. Oh yeah, we have it. Two of them. Shark by three quarter yeah, inch the T. Standard T. Two of them. Yeah. One yeah. inch pex pipe cutter. Yeah. Master lock set your own. Yeah. Two inch, one yeah. of them. And that's yeah, it. Done. Yeah. I have to feel So you just need shed. to get the shed. Yeah. Things will do for that one percent. <laughs> for the one percent? Oh. oh. <laughs> that was still a lot. That was like nineteen bucks, right? Yeah, I know. Good morning! It is Sunday and it's like 9.15. <laughs> too bright. We're here super early in the morning because it's moving day. And when I say moving day, I don't mean like move into the house. I mean like move that fat slab <laughs> it's originally the patio slab that is normally like right here but we're moving that to the side of the house that way Danny can use it as a solid foundation for his water softener we're gonna get rid of this slab anyways because we're eventually gonna pour concrete so this is our way of so-called recycling it without breaking it down this thing is like 600 pounds pretty deceiving help has arrived and uh, despite Oh, they're actually doing it. I still have been summoned, so I'm heading out there right now. After mass, I'm moving that huge slab. They did it! I just, uh, you know, supervise. Then they put the shed in. Water softener. It looks good, right? So I have been given the random dirty job, not really dirty, more like wet job, of running the hose through the filter. We're just gonna take like 25 minutes. So I'm just gonna sit there and turn the hose on and off <laughs> while Danny goes Home Depot. That's the central filter. We have to run the hose through it for 15 minutes total. And then after 15 minutes, I have to turn it on and off in intervals of 30 seconds. So turning it on for 30 seconds turning it off for 30 seconds, turning it on for 30 seconds for a total of 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go get a chair, I'm gonna sit out here, <laughs> I'm gonna babysit this freaking filter. <laughs> All right, so this is our water softener setup. Uh, so this is the mini shed that we have on the side of the house. All right, so first, this is the water coming from the main line into the house. So it used to just go straight into the house, but now it's going into this water softener and then coming back out. If uh, there's something wrong with this, we could turn both these off and then have it bypass and just go, just like how it was before. This is the water softener. Just a bunch of salt. And then here is the control panel where it just automatically regenerates when needed and this tells us how many gallons are remaining. It's like every week or so that uh, it regenerates automatically. 
this bottom blue line is the where it comes in from the city basically goes behind and then hits our first filter which is a pre-filter just gets rid of the big particles before it enters into our system and then it hits our central filter which is a carbon filter um, so even with that by itself it would be able to get rid of a lot of the micro load if there is any and then after that it goes into the metal which is our input for our water softener the water softener does its thing and then it goes into our post filter which is just to catch some last particles uh, before it goes back into the house so yeah that's basically it um, you'll see there's two of these black tubes one of them is just the overflow the one that's not into the drain is the overflow which is just if that whole cabinet becomes filled with water it'll go into that tube which I have it pointing out just because uh, it should never go off mm. and then this one is when it regenerates, it uh, produces water that just gets drained. And uh, that's the drain plumbed into the house drain, basically. So yeah, that's basically it. Some people in the garage, they have a loop, which is a place where you could put this whole system in your garage using that loop, but we didn't have it, so we had to go to the main supply into the house, which is right here. We use shark bites for most of the connections just because I didn't want to weld anything and make anything permanent. Uh, all this could technically be undone pretty easily. So yeah, Good it job. was a fun project for one of the first projects for the house. So, yeah. Would you call this a semi-DIY? Oh yeah, it's definitely doable. After we did this, we helped your dad do his. Yeah, and his setup is a little bit different just depending on like where the water line goes in and out yeah so luckily we had space right next to the where the water enters into the house if we didn't um, let's say the water entry point was in front of the gate we would have to pipe it behind the gate do it over here and then go back into the house because i've seen somewhere the whole filter system is out in front and yeah no one wants to see that so. it's a bit of an eyesore yeah. Does the water softener unit have to be in a shed? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some where they just have the big tank out in the open, but... Uh, but do they have all these other filters along? Uh, no, for the most part. Not everyone does the pre-filters and stuff. Oh, and I use PEX for like the plastic tubing on the inside. And you don't want that exposed to the UV light that'll break down so the only stuff on the outside that you can see is copper mm. and pex is way more flexible yeah easier to cut yeah definitely. don't have to cut metal yeah that's basically it. oh it's much cheaper than copper copper is hella expensive yeah oh and then this is the slab of concrete that we moved from our back uh in front of our back sliding door because we were gonna put a whole concrete slab anyways so it was either this or build a wood platform for it. I was just going to put it on rocks, but Rochelle really wanted a platform because she's all by the book. So yeah. <laughs> well, we were going to break up this uh, slab anyways, so the hardest part was just moving it. Yep. That was a fun day. Going down <laughs> this long hallway. Yeah. yeah. You can see how wide that slab is and how wide this walkway is. Yeah. And then only two people trying to move it. It's not fun. Well, we only had a foot to go. Back and forth, yeah. We had like six inches on each side, right? But once we got to this, like 10 inches was gone. We only had an inch on each side. Are you talking about this pipe right here? Once we got to this pipe. Yeah. Like this foot, yeah. It was, that was kind of hard. Well, we did it. But it was better than buying new concrete or trying to build something else, I guess. Yeah. All right, that's it. You did a great job. Thank you. Uh, Danny tested the water coming out of the faucet outside. Yeah. 
out of the hose bib. He wanted to see if that water coming out of the bib is softened, and I think it is. Yeah, so that's interesting. So that's something to consider when you're actually using water outside. Yeah. At least well, you don't have the a sprinkler pool. system is separate. Yeah. So that's fine. Mm -hmm. I just thought those two faucets would be. Yeah. Yeah, because that water is coming from inside. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This time we go turn on the sprinkler and get the unsoft water. Uh. Because <laughs> I'm trying to see the difference. Oh, yeah. I've seen it before. So this yellow one is from our softened water, which is about a zero. Okay. What well, should be a zero. This one's from our sprinklers in the front, like so unsoftened water. Uh huh. And it's, I mean, it's pretty close to the second to last one. This one? Yeah. Well, that's like, a 15. Well, like right in between. Yeah. So this middle is a seven, which it says is hard. This second to last is 15, and then very hard is 25, but it's not there. Mm hmm. It's probably between these two, so yeah. let's say a 10. <laughs> <laughs> so the water softener definitely made a difference. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I'm supposed to use that as a calculation for setting up the water softener. So we're going to do a water test. This is the water after it's been softened by the water softener and cleaned by the whole house filtration system. So, uh, and then this is water from our irrigation, so uh, the sprinklers basically. So I turned on the sprinklers, caught it, and yeah, so we're going to see the difference. Uh, first, we have to verify water hardness test strips. Um, so this is straight up just going to tell us if it's hard water or soft water. Uh, and then we have the complete water test kit, which is going to tell us a whole bunch of different things. So that's like the pH, the hardness, hydrogen sulfide, iron, copper, lead, manganese, total chlorine, mercury, nitrate, nitrite, sulfate, zinc, fluoride, sodium chloride and total alkalinity so you'll see the difference between that too but um, the hardness one is the easiest test because you only have to look at one color all right so my right hand oh all I have to do is dip it in for two seconds shake off the excess and then uh, keep it level and then in the next 30 seconds I am able to read the results so one two shake it off so you see how this one's more green and this one's more brownish? So this green is on the zero spectrum. This brown is between three and seven. It's more, uh, as we wait, it's turning more and more orange. So it's about seven. So it shows that um, the water softener is softening the water. So you see the seven is in the middle range. Well, four or five, I'll say five is more middle where you still call it hard, but very hard is 25, so it's not like all the way in that scale, but it's still on the harder end. What would you say is right now? It's about a 7. Can you see that? Like, if you look at this, it's a little more different, and then this is, yeah. And then this is our softened water, which it wouldn't be brown enough for this, mm -mm. so, yeah. The second test involves this whole thing. So you dip it for two seconds, shake off the excess, and then you have 60 seconds to uh, read the results. And then there's, on the back there's a chart. Um, the other one, it was on the tube too. Um, that's where you get the color chart. This one has the color chart for each test. So two seconds, put it down, and then I'm gonna do this one. It's just the, uh... all right. This is pH, the very top one. They're almost the same, actually. So the very top, either way, they're in within range. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. All right, so for the next one is hardness. You see that this one's blue, and this one's more purple, like a dark. And you'll see on here, um, it goes from soft to hard. So right now they call it a hundred. It's ppm versus uh, GP gallons, nah, grains per gallon. So it's a little different. Um, oh, down here it says ppm. So earlier we were at 120 with the um, earlier with the unhardened water or the hard water, the unsoftened water. 
it was 120. In this case, it's about 100 because this scale is a little different. So it's about in the same. Just going down, hydrogen sulfide, they're both white, so it's zero, which is okay. The next one's um, iron, and it's supposed to be white slash pink, like any of these are okay. I don't know if you can see on this chart, it has that green underneath it. It tells you each, either of these are okay results. Uh, for copper, it's within range, like as long as it's not blue. Um, so yeah, and it's pretty yellow right now. For lead, you'll see that the unhard or the hard water from the irrigation has this reddish, which means that it actually had some lead, um, but without when it was softened, it was fine. You know what I mean? So the next one, manganese, is yellow is okay. So both are yellow. Total chlorine, both are white. I know you see a little yellow, but it's dripping from the top one. Um, and even if it was yellow, it doesn't fall under the, any of these categories. For mercury, it's light pink, which is okay. Nitrate, it's basically white. Uh, it might you might say there's a little pink, but that's okay. It's not like this harder, uh, darker pink. Nitrite is white, so we're good. Uh, sulfate. It's kind of like in between these two, so we're okay on uh, zinc, we're okay on because it's that brighter color. Fluoride, same thing. Uh, sodium chloride, it, it's pretty dark, so I would say it's that zero. And then total alkalinity, I think we would call it the 180, but um, that's in the okay range. So overall, we're good on all of the all of these, um, except the hardness where the irrigation you could tell that it was definitely harder. And technically, we're outside of that minute range, so yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> so you gotta read them fast or do multiple strips. So uh, the main differences that we saw were the hardness, of course. Um, so then there was a big difference there, and I think. Lead was the one that we were like. It was super high in lead. Yeah, so um, the filtered water that we're, we have going into the house, um, there's no lead. But there was in the source. So, um, so the filter system's working. Yeah. So, yeah. Fun stuff. Sorry, there was a lot of colors. I don't know how well you can see it. You could um, definitely go. Um, you can definitely go about choosing your own type of water test. Yeah. We just got one that was incredibly thorough. <laughs> yeah. we, we got the water hardener test and the complete water test. Yeah. And they're both on Amazon, so yeah. simple stuff. It comes with a bunch of tests. So I think it um, also they, comes with a bacteria. Yeah, they came with bacteria test. Uh, I did do the test, but I didn't do like a before filtration and after filtration. The city water should technically pass. Um, I used to work for a lab that tested county water, so. <laughs> so it has to pass. So it should pass, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Hello there, future Rochelle and Danny here. <laughs> uh, we just want to talk about the water softener. So basically, it's been a year, more than a year that we've had water softener. Mm -hmm. and. I think that maybe a water softener is not for everybody. Mm. I would research it on your own to see whether it is something for you. Mm. I think for us, we just decided to do a water softener because, you know, like the new house situation. Since it's a new house, that it would do less damage to our pipes, at least for the hard water. Like it would be better for... In the long run. In the long run, the hard water does like ruin your pipes. So water softener was the solution for that. Mm -hmm. Also, it's good for your hair, skin, nails, all that stuff. Uh, we have a bunch of filters that filters all the water that goes into the house. So yeah, I guess it just depends on what your needs and where you live is whether or not you should get a water softener. That's totally up to you. Not for everyone, but this is just what we wanted to do. Yeah. And the water tastes a lot better than normal tap water. So. Especially in this area, like yeah. you, there's a specific taste to water yeah. that's just like not... You can tell the difference right away. Yeah. Oh, our irrigation water is not uh, softened. Yeah. So, right. everything that goes into like the grass and the plants, that's not softened. But everything for a shower, mm -hmm. 
uh, our drinking water, our tap water is all softened. Um, in dishes and laundry. And stuff like that. Oh yeah, it's also useful for like soaps and detergents and being more efficient. So like your laundry, your dishwasher, all that stuff because soap needs to work harder with hard water for some reason. Like it doesn't yeah. suds up as easily. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So if you're ever curious about your water quality and all that stuff, uh, you could always get water test strips. We just bought some. From Amazon, yeah. From Amazon. Uh, but thank you for watching the video. Until next time. Bye! <laughs>